Well, I'm, I'm really honored to, uh, to represent what I think is one of the best ministries in the world. And I'm just saying that because that's what I believe in my heart. Um, I've, I've been part of this ministry for the last 11 years, and, um, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool when every single day you get to be exposed and, and you get to hear testimonies every day. I mean, it, uh, it kind of um, it feels, uh, it feels very gratifying. And, and we're, um, that's, that's about as much as you're going to hear me talk about money this morning. I will say that we, we, do, um, we do appreciate if you consider supporting us, and thank you for that. There's lots of information in the, uh, in the little uh, brochures that you have on your, on your seats, and uh, you can either give us something here today or you can send something in. There's, uh, there's addressed envelopes and so forth, but what a privilege that we get to... Um, um, we, 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 I have to give a little, a little shout out. How many of you uh, know Pastor Bruce Martin in Winnipeg? Um, we, this evening um, is his very last uh, service before he, uh, he officially retires and, and we, have, we actually have four of our men, our team's a little smaller this morning because this team is going straight to uh, Swan River, Manitoba this evening, uh, right this afternoon we're traveling up to Swan River and, and, we, um, and so we couldn't take as many people because we have, we have four men that are being baptized this evening in uh, Pastor Bruce Martin's final service. And, and what an honor for us to, uh, to be able to be part of that with him. And so, uh, what, you know, it's, it's a privilege to, to, see, to see partnerships. And we just want to thank you for having us here. Thank you that, that we have the opportunity to uh, just to, uh, to, to see, to, al to allow you to be part of this journey with us. And um, an another really um, great way, if, if you want to just consider this on your heart, um, one of the see, see one of the things that um, that we have the privilege of, and also the challenge of, is that we are unapolog um, unapologetically Christian, and we uh, we we are very open about that. Um, we we are we are about Jesus, and of course that comes at a cost sometimes on the on the funding level, and so we don't we don't get public funding um, and things like that. But we have found some really great, intelligent ways that we can get some revenue streams, including our thrift stores. And so if you've ever been to our super thrift store on St. James, uh, near the uh, superstore there, uh, feel free to drop by and just see what God is doing. I, I like to think you go there for a shirt and you leave with an experience because everywhere there's, there's testimonies everywhere, there's Christian music playing and... And uh, I heard one person look at me and say, "Boy, I don't get this at Walmart, you know." And, uh, and so, if that's on your heart, you know, to you know, sometimes when you're transitioning out of the cottage or you're transitioning out of out of a certain place, a season in life, there's maybe a few things that we can come and pick up and put into our stores, so it would allow us for some uh, additional revenue. Household items, clothing—they're all valuable for us, and so uh, we'll come and pick it up, even in Gimli. And so, uh, so just let us know how we can uh, make that happen. Uh, the contact info is there. Um, I, I, I'm going to ask you this morning, just for a few minutes, uh, if we can turn to 1 John chapter 1. And I want to share something that um, it's just beating in my heart this morning because, because I'm, I'm thinking about testimonies. And aren't testimonies powerful? You know, you go to, um, they're, they're powerful for the good and they're powerful, they can be powerful against you as well because if you're on trial, and for, for a crime that you've committed, what happens when somebody is called into the courtroom? What are they called? A witness. And what do they do? Testify. They witness. They testify, right? And, you know, it's funny because I, I remember reading something in Acts about how we will also be some witnesses. Somebody named Jesus said that, right? And he said that we would be the ones that would tell people about what he has done. And so in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. Verse 2, the life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you, God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us 
from all sin. I want to tell you this morning, there's power in testimony. There's power in it. There's power when David comes and, and, uh, and shares and, and has some family and friends that are here to witness to it. And, um, and when Preston comes forward and a, a new father. How old is your, your little one? Uh, she's nine, months. nine months old. Precious, precious daughter. And, and there's power in that. And, and uh, you, you need to get to know Dave, who he's a great piano player. And, uh, but but much, much more than that, he loves Jesus. And, and he's an evangelist. And he, and he loves to tell people about Jesus. And he graduated from our program uh, several years ago and, just, and felt called to stay and serve back. And that's what he's doing with excellence right now. You know, we get to travel a lot. We, we get to go around. We're, we're um, you know, we, we, um, we're going to be... We're going to be on the road for a few hours this afternoon, going further north into Manitoba, and we spend a lot of time together, and, and sometimes we get tired of each other. Maybe that never happens in your house. Maybe everyone loves each other all the time, but we get into, under each other's skin sometimes, and, um, and sometimes things smell a little bit funny when you're all in the same bed together, and, and all of that kind of stuff, and, and not everyone wants the same kind of music played all the time. You know exactly what I'm talking about this morning. And there's something that never grows old for me, though. If I can be many hours on the road with somebody, and we walk into a place, and I can hear a testimony, it never gets old for me. There's power in that. There's healing power in that. In fact, Revelations, I believe chapter 3, it, it talks about that is actually our key to overcoming our enemy, and, and the enemy that accuses us day and night about the things that we have done. How many of you know that the past is a very powerful thing that many times keeps us from going into the future? Because we keep looking backwards. And the enemy, in, in Revelations, the, um, um, the John the Revelator, he calls, he calls him the accuser of the brethren in one of, the, uh, in one of the, the translations. And he says the accuser of the brethren, day and night he accuses us. And yet, what, is, what are the two keys that help us to overcome the accusations that come against us. The blood of the Lamb, it says, we have overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, and secondly, the word of our testimony. Every single day, Satan, you don't have my heart. You think that I have been a failure. You think that I have been, I have been cast out by all of my loved ones. That may or may not be true. But you know what? Jesus says, God says of me that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And God says that, that I have, and that, that He knows the plans for me, Jeremiah 29 11, plans to prosper me and not to harm me, plans to give me a hope and a future, despite my past. Oh, I love that. I like to think that one day when we, when we come into, into glory, when we come into the kingdom of God, and we come past those pearly gates, and, we, and however that looks, but we start exploring and we start seeing all sorts of different things. I remember I, I can I can picture and I know for I, I, I'm I'm quite sure that at some point, maybe after a thousand years of praising God at his throne, at some point we're going to we're going to just start sharing about what his blood has done and why we are there and why we don't deserve to be there, but we still are there. And we're gonna just one by one we're gonna start sharing testimonies. It's not gonna get old. It's not going to get old. Do you think that I have to have a needle in my arm in order to, to, to speak about what Jesus has done in my life? No. I've never had a problem with drugs. I've never had, well, my parents drug me to school, to church every Sunday. That's the one thing they did. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. And I'm thankful for that. But you know what I mean, right? And I've never had a problem, a deep problem with alcohol or, or um, different things. But, but I do know that there are things that can take control of my life. And there are things that, that um, I have a hard time um, allowing to give up control. <laughs> One of them is right here, <laughs> if I'm really honest, right? And maybe if we're honest with ourselves. But there's a lot of things. Maybe it's possessions, our obsession about getting more things, our obsession about making more money. Or maybe it's pornography. We heard about that this morning. There's a lot of powerful things that can take control of our life. But Jesus wants to set us free. And when he does, we need to share and we need to let people know about it. And you, might, and you might go through your life, and you might be saying, well, I don't have a testimony like that. Well, let me ask you this, very, very forward way this morning. Has Jesus done something in your life? Then you have a testimony. If he has saved you, you have a testimony. And maybe you have been a, a, a chosen person your whole life, and you've never done anything wrong. 
But if Jesus has saved you, you still have a testimony. And of course, none of us can say that we've never done anything wrong. It makes no difference how bad or how terrible our, our sins are. It says our, skin, our sins are like scarlet, but Jesus will make them white as snow. It's a miracle. And maybe, maybe, we've, maybe you are here this morning and you have, and you have uh, been walking with Christ for quite a while. And, and you have it all figured out, and, and we would love to learn from you about that. Maybe you have just, you're just starting to figure things out. But I'll tell you this, we never should stop testifying about what Jesus has done in our lives. And that's why we do it. In this scripture that we read in verse 3, it says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And I love that. And, and the, the neat thing is, that um, nobody can argue with your testimony, right? When somebody is invited into prison and and or into uh, into court and they are asked to testify about something, nobody can argue with them because they are the eyewitness to whatever is being questioned, right? And when you speak to somebody, Lord, I'm so proud of you. You know, I know that I know that public speaking is probably not the thing that you woke up one morning and said, I'm going to be a public speaker my whole life, or I'm going to go in front of crowds. But your testimony is encouraging people. Were you encouraged by a testimony this morning? Amen. We can get more than that. But nobody can argue with your testimony because it happened to you. And so you have a very unique story that you can share. That's why when, um, that's why Jesus said this this word witness, right? Being a witness in a trial, Jesus said in Acts 1.8, He said, you will be my witnesses. Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. You will talk about Jesus. You will share the, with others of His work and His life-changing power. I want to tell you, thirdly, this morning that testimonies complete our joy. I've never seen that more so than when we go to different places and and I remember, um, so last night, just as an example, we have a, we had a group of uh, just a couple of men, a few men from our Steinbeck long-term campus and a few men from our Winnipeg campus. They just, they just felt the heart to, to get out to Central Park last night. If you've ever been in Central Park, it's a pretty um, um, vibrant and, and, and variable place. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going on in Central Park at any given time. And, and they just brought about four cases of water into the park, and they just... They just handed out water to people and, and just told them that Jesus loved them. And, and if they had a moment, that they shared their testimony with people. And I just love that. And what I found was a, a lot of them felt nervous about doing it. But then afterwards, when we were all sitting down just sharing a little bit, they were all so joyful. And, and I noticed that just like, just like Jesus, when he sent out the 70, and they all came back rejoicing, right? You know that little mission trip he sent them on? Testimony completes our joy. In fact, it says in in the in the um, in the, the last verse, verse four that we that we were or the, in verse four that we were reading about. He um, the the author says we write this to make our joy complete. See, he put it down and it made him feel complete. That's cool, right? We live in a time where somebody's good news can be seen by thousands and hundreds of thousands of people in seconds, right? That's why we have Facebook. That's why God created Facebook, right? <laughs> well, it can be bad too, right? We can use it to argue, or we can, we can use it to share God's love, or everything in between, right? We can use things for the good or for the bad. But that is why we have Facebook, so we can share our joy, isn't it? You know, our little dog... Or our, our little baby said Dada for the first time and everyone needs to know, right? Or, uh, or we got a new pair of shoes and then all of a sudden everybody sees the pair of shoes or you know what I mean. <laughs> but we do it to complete our joy because we want to share about it. I talked a bit about this already this morning, but testimony really does, come, does um, defeat our enemy. And... Um, and I just, I just want to, um, we talked a little bit about that verse, but I just want to give you the greater context of, of this verse. And, and, and it was from Revelation chapter 12. And I'm just going to read from verse 7 to 11. And, and the reason I'm reading this is because um, I've heard uh, one of my pastors say that a text without the context is just a pretext. Mm -hmm. Right? 
So, so that just I just can put, pick something out and pretend that I use that as my sword. But the truth is that the context is so important because then then it's not just my pretext. It's it's I'm using the whole truth. And in verse in uh, Revelations 12, 7 to eleven, it talks about about war, and we can use it in the context of spiritual battles as well. It says, "Then there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels." And the dragon lost the battle, and, he is, and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. And then I heard a loud voice a, shouting across the heavens, It has come at last, salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth. The one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb who is Jesus and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. I'm not sure if you, that's a very intense and very powerful packed story there. But John, who, who, who many call John the Revelator, the one who wrote Revelations, is describing the vision he has of this massive war that is going on with the enemy. And those who believed in Jesus, and they defeated that enemy, and he's kicked out of heaven. And he's reminding us that all authority belongs to Jesus. The Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. The word of our testimony. If you think our testimony is just good for, for um, church, or if you think our testimonies are just good for, um, for you know, quickly saying something in, in, a, in, a, in a big, big uh, group of people like this, then I think that you are mistaken about what a testimony is truly about. Because I think um, our testimonies in everyday life have even more power. And I just want to encourage you this morning, as we, as we, um, as we move on from this day here, um, as we, as we, uh, you know, reflect on what we have heard and what we have seen this morning. Here's what I want. Here's what I want um, us to just, to just be dwelling on this morning, is just, what is the power that's in my testimony? Because there's power in, in your testimony, just like there's power in my testimony. And and we don't have to be that person. I, I Every once in a while I pass someone in, in downtown Winnipeg, and God bless him, but he has a turn or burn sign up, you know. And we don't have to be that person. But I'll tell you this. How are people going to know that Jesus makes a difference if he's not making a difference? You understand what I'm saying? seen it so often that you know people people like one of my heroes Lauren this morning how they come in front of others strangers and I think it's very courageous to do what they did this morning to share some of the darkest deeds of your past in front of strangers it's a it's a very powerful thing but I see them and when they have the chance to do that there's a joy that completes for them and they feel empowered, and they're like, when are we doing this again? <laughs> Look at what Jesus did. So, what is your testimony? What is my testimony? You may have never had a problem with drugs. You may have never had a problem with alcohol or pornography. But if Jesus is in your life, and he's the Lord of your life, then for sure there is something to talk about. No one meets Jesus and walks away the same again. Nobody meets him and it is ever the same. And so this morning we just, um, I, I'll, I'll get the guys, I want you guys to come up here and we're going to do a, we're going to actually sing that song, I Speak Jesus again this morning for, uh, before we close the service. But, I just want to remind you that that there is there is so much um, there is so much significance and blessing that you invited us here this morning. 
and I want to thank you. Thank you for the uh, Pastor Richard. We had some great, great chat and conversations ahead of the service a few weeks ago. And there's just so much, there's such blessing that I, I, I sensed from you. And thank you for having us here this morning. We, we, we bless all of you back. Thank you for allowing us to share our hearts. Thank you for allowing us to, to go to some of those places that um, a lot of people don't even know about. But here we are. We get to tell you. We get to. We don't have to. We get to. And so, with all of that, my final thing that I want to say to you is uh, we want to invite you to allow us to pray with you as well. Um, we know that a lot of, we know that there's a lot of situations, a lot of circumstances that people are walking through. Um, and I, I've said this many times, and I, 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 many times in public I have said that I believe that whenever one pandemic is over, I know that the next pandemic has already started which is addictions and mental health. And uh, for sure, for sure, for sure. I, we don't need to argue that because I think most of you would agree with that. And so um, for the for those that are lost and lonely, for those that are feeling fearful and timid, for those that are, are feeling as though life will never be the same again, allow Jesus to remind you that that's okay because when you are with him, you're never the same again. And so be encouraged this morning if we can pray with you uh, we're gonna hang around. I heard there's coffee afterwards, and so we're gonna we're gonna drink some coffee with you, and we're gonna just uh, just fellowship with you. We want you to know that um, uh, we, we've done our mission. Jesus is real, but after this, we want you to know that um, he there is help available. There's lots of different programs. I never talked about this, but there's um, we have some very powerful programs that um, support actively support families and loved ones of someone that they love that is in addictions and so you have a loved one that's not nearly ready or keep saying no we want to, we'd love to walk with you because there's some great stuff we can do with you to encourage you and to uh, help you maybe even shift the narrative in the whole situation through uh, through how you can approach and respond um, thank you for um, thank you for your prayers we, we covet that above everything else just keep praying for us we're uh, we're in a very interesting season in our ministry because there are so many opportunities that are coming that we have to be very wise because we can't grow ahead of, of everything else. And so uh, just keep praying with us. Thank you for your love and your grace. And uh, we, uh, I just want to pray. As I'm going to pray and then we'll, we'll uh, close with, um, with I Speak Jesus, uh, the song that we sang before. Father, this, this morning, in the presence of the righteous, in the presence of the just, we declare Jesus over hurt situations right now. We declare Jesus over, over those situations that seem too far gone. And there's no way for redemption. But we speak Jesus over it anyhow. Lord, we thank you that you are in control. We thank you that you care deeply about the circumstances that might be represented here, God. I pray that, you know, that, that hope would rain down right now over someone that feels as though... Um, there's nothing that can be redeemable in their family, 